Hey, welcome. Today we're going to be doing an online lab for physics, AP physics, and physical science style classes. And what you can see right here is a picture of my setup that I had at my local park this morning. So I'm going to be using a wall flipping buggy, and I'm going to want you to take data from the following video. So the video is about a minute long, and it's got a initial portion that's just going to be the video data in real time. And then it's got a second portion right after that that's going to be the video portion in a slowed down manner. So it's going to be slowed down by three times. And I've got timers overlaid for both videos, so the timers are already set up so that they're reduced. The slow-mo video goes with the slower timer as well. You'll see what I'm talking about. All right, so next I'd like to talk to you about what you're going to be expected to do for this lab if you're in my class or what you would do if you're not in my class to understand these concepts and how they relate to what we've been talking about lately. First of all, you do need a data table and what you're going to take data on for this is going to be a position versus time situation. So you can see the labels at the bottom of the video that I showed you in terms of tens of meters down below there. You should take 10 or more data points for this so you can get some decent data here in terms of your position versus time. Next up you're going to draw three solid graphs and they should be scaled evenly. So I'm going to put a link in the upper right right about now if you have trouble with scaling graphs because you don't want to draw bad graphs for one of the first labs you're going to do for a physics course. And what exactly I mean by bad graphs in terms of having a vast amount of dead space on your graph. It'll look much better if you know what you're doing. Next up, I do want to say your first graph you're going to draw is a position versus time graph. And you can kind of anticipate what this is going to look like, possibly. I mean, if you know what you're doing, you can anticipate how the position is going to change. Remember, the buggy is moving in the negative direction, so to speak. It starts out at a positive position and moves in the negative direction. So think about what the position is going to do with time as the buggy heads towards the curb and rebounds off of the curb. All right, then you're going to draw a speed versus time graph. So you're going to have to do two calculations here and show your work with units. And that's going to be to solve for the speed before the collision with the curb, it should say, not wall, but the curb, and after the collision with the curb, showing your work. And then those answers you're going to plot on your graph. So your speed is going to be relatively stable before it hits the wall and after it hits the wall, but you need to know what those values are based on the data that you have taken. And I do want you to think about if this is going to be positive or negative. So be careful with that. And then for part C, you're going to be drawing a velocity versus time graph. And for this, we definitely need to remember that to the left is going to be considered to be negative and to the right is going to be considered to be positive. Show your work in terms of your calculation for your velocity before the collision with the curb and the velocity after the collision with the curb. So B and C are going to be similar in the sense that you do a couple calculations beforehand. And then you can use that data to more or less plot your graphs. I would say during the collision, don't worry about the speed or the velocity too much, but think about what the graph is doing beforehand and think about what it's doing after the collision with the curb. And based on that, draw like a transition line if there needs to be one. So that's the background for this lab, how to go about actually doing this lab through an online medium. I would do this lab with students. And really the only difference here is that you don't get to take the data yourself, but with the overlay of the timer, it's actually easier to be able to get good data for this lab. So hopefully this has been helpful. If you have any comments, please let me know down below. And please stick around in this unit for other topics in our kinematics unit for physics. And as I cover units throughout the entire year, if you want to take a look at my channel, go for it. Have a great day, everyone. Take care.